As we have already uh, mentioned, my name is Eral Bashar and my colleague here, uh, the course author, is Veronica. And as you can see our email addresses on the screen, um, if you need any questions, uh, you can always email myself. Um, alternatively, and we will share information about this on, on this presentation in a, in a little, uh, you can always contact us through the course platform as well as the social media outlets that we are using. So, starting with the course itself, the learning objectives of this course are as uh, mentioned in the, in the slides. We are going to tell you about um, the importance of having e-safety policies in a school and then we will move, move on to um, identifying the risks and challenges in your school context uh, so that you can, you can help uh, prepare a better and technical environment for your students. Um, beyond this, we will also uh, help you to um, learn about the whole school approach for those who may not be um, familiar with this with this uh, concept. It is, as the name suggests, bringing together ev each of the relevant parties, teachers, parents, the school management, ICT professionals, students, uh, to, to whatever you're doing. In this case, preparing a, a safety strategy. And finally, we will um, provide you with the necessary tools and knowledge for implementation monitoring and assessment of the strategy that you will create within this book. So when you go, if you have already gone through the pages of the MOOC, you can see that there's a, there are various tabs in, on the top of your screen. Uh, the first one, the course, will give you the outline of the course itself. Uh, for now, you will only be able to see the module one and subsections within module one. But beyond this, that you will also see a link on the bottom right about uh, a pre-course survey. We, are, we would very much appreciate if you could just take a little five, 10 minutes at most, I guess, um, to take this survey and fill it in. At the end of the course, in, in one and a half months approximately, there will also be a link for a post-course survey. These are very important for us in, in the sense that um, we evaluate our courses and um, we then improve our future courses based on the, the results of these surveys. So it is really helpful for us to make better courses in the future. Uh, so we would really appreciate if you can take these surveys. And after that, one of the other um, steps to take before you start the course uh, content is the meet your peers section as you can see on the slide you will see there's a small uh, guidance and a map there um, please take a moment to place your uh, marker on that map so that everybody can see where you're coming from and how, where you're joining the MOOC from um, this is a sort of meet and greet you can also always uh, share extra information about yourself on that pin um, and your peers can know more about you. In terms of course structure, um, this course is consisting of four modules. Each module will start um, coming Mondays. So first module was has already launched today on 21st of October. The upcoming modules will start on uh, each mo Monday afterwards, so 28th of October, 4th of November, and 11th of November. Um, after this period, there will be about a 10-day um, period where you evaluate your, your um, peers' uh, work. And we will talk about this in a little, but um, to, to pass this course, you will have to fill in a, a template throughout the course. And at the end of the course for a peer review, 
uh, exercise you will submit this everybody will submit their period uh, their templates and then in this 10 day period you will go through um, three of your peers uh, templates to review them and grade them based on a rubric and the course will end on 27th of November there will be a brief period of uh, blackout uh, where the course will not be available anymore but after that the course will open indefinitely and um, it will be there on the uh, for others to see and review or for you to go back and see the content again but after that point there will be no certificates awarded for completing the course content so if you want a certificate it's between 21st October and 27th of November you have to do everything in the course we will have one live event aside from today's webinar throughout this course it's going to be uh, on third module and it's it will be a teach meet um, you can find more information on this in the live event section of the uh, course um, the date of this is not yet announced as you can see but it is the week of 4th of November uh, as the time gets closer we will put a definite time and date on there it's likely to be in the evening again but uh, it's not written on stone we are trying to get these uh, live events in the evening time so that professionals as many of you may be uh, can find the time to join um, as you're working in the working in the daytime as I mentioned uh, there will be a certificate rewarded for those who complete the course successfully at the end of the course um, the well you have to go through each of the units in each module to be able to uh, receive this course this is not mentioned on the slide but that is obviously one of the uh, requ requirements to uh, to be awarded a certificate you have to see and participate in each of the uh, parts of the mod uh, the course but beyond that as I mentioned you will have to fill in a template to submit at the end of the course this template along with the guideline and the rubric will be shared within the first module so you should already be able to see it in 1.5 section 1.5 of the module one um, in in a nutshell uh, the template is divided into sections and each se in each section um, uh, there are some fields that for you to uh, to provide some information um, we we will give you tasks in at the end of each module to to fill in this template so we will tell you please fill in from this section to this section or this page to this page of the template um, for this template you can use the guidelines provided along with it uh, to see how you can approach this exercise it provides you with all sorts of uh, practical information regarding template and in module 4 when you come to the peer-to-peer -peer exercise you will submit your completed template and this is very important it has to be completed from the beginning to the end of it in one single uh, document word document um, you have to submit that and then you will receive three other templates from your peers the other people's submissions to review in this at this point you will use that rubric we provide also in the first module um, to, to evaluate your peers templates strategy templates so this is to, to um, to guide you through peer evaluation and also to uh, standardize our evaluation system so it's not um, subjective from person to person one thing to keep in mind in these peer-to-peer uh, -peer reviews is to 
provide as much details and comments to your uh, re reviews as possible. This will help your peers to develop their strategy further, see where it's uh, coming short and see uh, where it's really strong. So if you, if you don't say things like, oh, this is good, this is great, but more critical reviews, where, where, it, is, where it can be improved further, uh, this should definitely help your peers. Also, as a, as a um, helping idea, I would suggest to everyone to take a look at the rubric from the first day on um, so that you will know how your template, strategy template, will be evaluated by your peers. That will make you create a better uh, strategy altogether. And Veronica might mention in, a, in the following slides when, when she is talking about the course content. But this um, uh, strategy that you create at the end of this MOOC uh, will not only help you create a better, um, safer environment in your school for uh, your pupils, it will also pave the way to, um, to apply for an e-safety label, which is a, a EU accreditation service for for schools and we have more information about the safety label and how to obtain it in, in the first module in I believe 1.4 section 1.4 of the first module. Oh, one more um, warning I would say for, for this um, uh, template Please be advised, it's a lengthy template, and so it is not a good idea to leave it to module four to fill it in. We strongly recommend that you start filling it, your, filling in your template from the first module and every module on. I'm, I'm seeing some questions. Uh, the rubric is just a short guideline on how to evaluate someone else's template, strategy template. So you will look at it at the, at the end of the course on fourth module when you receive three other strategy templates from your peers. And this will be, by the way, randomly assigned by the system itself. Um, you will look at that rubric to, to evaluate uh, these three templates that you received from the system. I hope that's uh, clear enough, Rosa. Moving further, um, the course itself has, um, in various parts of it, uh, interactive options for you to, to join in, such as the Padlet that you see an image of in here. This is from another course, an earlier course uh, prepared by our colleagues, uh, so that you have a visual vision of a uh, filled-in template, a uh, filled-in Padlet. There are other uh, interactive elements such as word cloud, discussion boards. And so it is, it's advised uh, that you join in the discussion in these places and write your ideas as asked and discuss with your colleagues or peers in the par uh, course that who are participating in the course. Um, this should broaden your horizons in the subject and help you um, create a better template and better strategy for your um, peer review. Now I will pass the microphone to my uh, colleague Veronica, who will be talking to you about the MOOC. Okay, thank you, Rai. Um, before I, 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 I move on, does anybody have like an urgent question for Rai? Because if not, we will leave the questions at the end. <laughs> um, I just read about the, the rubric there, and I explained it well. It's basically a template that will tell you which aspects you have to look at when you assess other people's um, strategy. So it's interesting to look at the rubric 
before you start actually developing your own strategy because it will help you to have an idea of what we consider a good strategy. So, uh, and you can already download it from, from module one, so it's already available. Um, in terms of the MOOC content, um, we have four content, uh, four modules, sorry, as I said, uh, and every module um, will give you some content and some practical advice about how to develop an online safety strategy for your school. Um, what is important to, to understand is that um, we are not in, probably what is important to highlight is what we are not doing in this MOOC. I mean, in this MOOC, we are not going to be developing class activities about the safety. We are not going to be discussing day-to-day, um, -day, um, um, I don't know, like teaching or lessons plans or very concrete activities to do with pupils in class, this is not about that. And this is why we think that the, the word strategy is so important. This is not something that you are going to be learning about specific things to implement in the class itself, but it's actually a strategy for the whole school. So the idea of this MOOC is to prepare you to work with your colleagues uh, and to work with your school uh, together on how to improve online safety at your school. And this is important because, um, I mean, you know, children are confronted with all types of um, potential risks on the internet. Um, they might be using the internet a lot. Uh, you might want to use uh, social media or some kind of um, online um, resources at school, but maybe you are unsure about uh, how can we do this in a constructive way, in an educational way, but also in a safe way. And many times, many schools these days end up maybe making decisions such as like, we won't use any social media at all, or we are not going to allow any mobile phones because this is the best interest of our students. But sometimes that might not be the best solution for all schools or for all pupils. So um, what is important is that every school has their own strategy uh, that, that you know as a school why you are making certain decisions in as regard social media or as regard the use of mobile phones, as regard uh, the infrastructure of your school. And when we talk about strategy, what we really mean, it's like, well, that the whole, everybody at school knows, like, we have a clear uh, vision about we're using technology or why we're not using it at school. We have a clear idea uh, of what kind of infrastructure is safe. We have a clear idea about what kind of information you can share about our pupils and what not. Uh, and we also have clear ideas of what are the kinds of practices that we want to um, encourage at our school and what are the things that we don't want to encourage. So, for instance, yeah, at our school we find it important that children use um, social media in educational projects, but at our school it's not okay that children use social media to record teachers giving a class and then uh, making fun out of them. Uh, and these things should be clear for everyone. I mean, these are rules, there are policies, but everything falls under strategy. So if your school has a good vision, has a clear vision about why you need technologies or why you don't need technologies at your school, under what circumstances, what for, and if you have a good idea of what are the, the challenges at your own school, not at the school next door, or not at the school in England, I mean, at your school, in your town, in your city, you have specific problems that you deal with and, and you should focus your strategy on those issues and not on those issues that the newspapers are telling you to focus on, not on the issues that maybe um, other countries are working on. I mean, I think every, every school should have like really an idea of what is important to them. And this is what it's, this is all about. To think about that, I mean, what is my school? What does my school need uh, to be a safer school and to promote the use of technologies uh, in a creative way, in positive ways uh, for my pupils, but also 
uh, for parents and also for my own staff. And module one is um, it's quite theoretical. It contains lots of documents, uh, but it's important for you to have an idea and to have a good basis of what are we going to do in the rest of the module. And here in this module, we explain that there are um, basically four main steps to develop a strategy. And then in the rest of the MOOC, we go deeper into each of these, these steps. So in module two is actually the first step. And the first step is understanding your school context, understanding, uh, researching what is happening, what your pupils need, what parents at your school are concerned about, what your colleagues think about technologies, and getting to know like what's going on at your school. Um, and we are going to work on module two, uh, reflecting a lot about your school context and the final product of this module is going to be a SWOT analysis of your own school um, as regards online safety. And a SWOT analysis is basically a self-reflection where you are going to summarize the main strengths, the main weaknesses, the main opportunities, and the main threats related to online safety at your school. And that's what module two is about. So you stop there, you make that analysis, and then we're going to move on to module three, which is when we really start building the strategy itself. And there it's when you're going to need the content of module two. Then you're going to see, ah, so after the analysis I made at my school, hmm, I see that we have lots of challenges in this area. Like, for instance, at my school, children are using are confronted a lot with fake news and they don't know how to identify it. So I really want to do something about that. At another school, maybe they have the school climate is not really uh, that positive. Maybe there are many issues of um, site online aggression, cyber bullying, harassment. And in that school might decide that their strategy is going to focus on those aspects. So, but that will come from an analysis of your school, an analysis of your students, and an analysis of what parents and your colleagues find important. And in that module, in three, you will build a strategy. You will have to make decisions and say, well, eh, I mean, online safety is huge. There are so many things that can happen, but uh, we cannot do it all at my school. Resources are limited. Time is limited. Um, we already have like so much to do, curriculum. Um, we also have like a, uh, um, to uh, comply with regulations. So we cannot do like the same that other schools in the UK are doing or in Australia are doing or in France. Uh, but we can do this for sure, yes. And then that's why it's important to reflect on your school, your experience, and you build your strategy for you. And there you decide on the focus areas, uh, which is basically the areas of interest of your strategy. So you, you, for some schools, the, the basic problem might be that the teachers feel insecure, that they don't know how to deal with technologies, that teachers don't want to use technologies, or maybe they don't know how to incorporate it in class. So maybe your strategy is going to be about improving um, the, of improving the knowledge of teacher, teachers, their self-esteem, uh, providing training courses. At other schools, maybe the staff are already doing a lot and a lot is happening. So you already, okay, we are doing that, but actually we, you might want to focus on, maybe we want to raise awareness among parents. So it will all depend on your strategy. And in this module, module three, you will have to make decisions and decide what's the most important for your school, but what is also realistic and feasible for you to achieve. Um, the sky is the limit and we want your strategies to be ambitious, but if you want the strategy to work, you will have to be very realistic. So for some of you, the resources, the capacity might be limited or you might have other types of problems at school. And uh, yeah, if that's the case, maybe you will have to choose very small objectives and that's fine. As far as you set objectives that you can realize, it's fine. 
And then we will also teach you how to write like smart goals and how to define what your objectives are. And every time you pass and you move on to the next module, uh, we will ask you to fill in a different section of the template. So there is a section in the template that is a SWOT analysis and you will fill it in. There is a section where it says now, right here on this section, your strategic vision. We give you an example and we give you tips on how to do it. I mean, and the tips are really clear, like in no more than four lines, describe this. Um, say, okay, define three focus areas or four, that's it, you write it down. Um, define three strategic goals and so on and so forth. But at the end of every module, then it, there, there will be one or two learning activities and one learning activity is always related to filling in specific sections of your template. Uh, now, nothing will happen if you don't fill them in. You can always start the next module. But the problem will be is that it can become quite uh, heavy at the end and you will have lots of work to do. And, and by doing it this way, we, we think you can um, actually divide uh, your time and your tasks. Uh, in a more evenly and then you won't be so busy at the end of the, of the MOOC. And the last module is about uh, monitoring, uh, it's about implementing, sorry, and about monitoring and assessing your strategy. And these are three very important things. The implementation plan is when you decide, okay, this is what I want to achieve, these are my objectives, this is, I decided to work on these areas, but uh, yeah, what are the activities? I mean, what are the, in, in practice, what are the, uh, the things, the steps that I need to take, the things that we need to do at school to achieve that? Because your object, objective can be, I want to make my pupils more um, aware of online risks, and that's a great objective, but how are you going to do that? Are you going to organize debates at school? Are you going to ask um, uh, colleagues to teach about it in class? Are you going to develop materials with your students or give presentations for parents? I mean, you can be as creative as you want and use the potential you already have. Uh, you can integrate these two activities and classes that maybe are already going on at school so that you maximize your time and you don't waste resources. So, but the way you do it is up to you and, and that will depend again on how much time your school has and how many resources your, your school can invest. So that's your strategic plan. When you really start thinking like, okay, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Are we gonna participate at the Safer Internet Day or not? And if we do, what for? And everything is related each other. So whatever action you put in the strategic plan is going to be connected to a very specific objective and to a very specific goal. You're not going to do anything in your strategy that doesn't have an aim. Because if that's the case, then it means that activity is irrelevant. So you're not going to waste time in your strategy. The idea is that whatever you do makes sense. And that's what we call, and I talk a lot in the resources about a meaningful strategy, a relevant strategy, something that makes sense, not just, I mean, going to do something because it's on the news or because everybody's doing it, so I have to do it. No, no, it's about your school. And the final plan, of course, is like, well, we have a strategy, we develop it, we start implementing it, and at some point you will need to know, is this strategy working? And yeah, well, that's a, an important question. Ah, my children safer online now that we have this strategy or not. So in the last module, we will think, uh, we will develop also an, an assessment plan, a plan, and the idea would be that um, for you to reflect uh, on what you can do to assess if your strategy is working or not. And again, this will, be, this will depend completely on the objectives that you set. And, and that's important. It's like, um, imagine that you, your objective is to, I don't know, to lose weight. <laughs> imagine that you're overweight and you need to lose weight. 
you need to define some objectives. Say, how much weight are you going to lose? In how much time? And what is what are the actions you're going to take to lose weight? Oh, I want to lose five kilos in five months. Okay, that's your objective. How are you going to achieve that? Well, I'm going to do more sports or some other people might not have time to sport. They might say, oh, no, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. I'm going to drink less alcohol. I mean, everybody can choose whatever strategy and they can do whatever actions. But at some point, they need to assess if after the five months, wow, did I meet my objective? Did I reach it? So how can you measure that? And there are different ways to measure it. I mean, some people might say, well, I'm going to measure my waist. Oh, it's more. But some, someone else might say, well, five kilo. I mean, the best way to assess that is by weighing yourself. Have you lost five kilo? That might be probably the best way to measure it. But not everything can be measured, <laughs> like with numbers of, uh, in, in terms of uh, in a quantitative way. So here we will reflect on ways. I mean, are my children more aware of online waste? Oh, how can I measure that? And we will give you some ideas, but basically it will all depend on your strategy and you will have to decide like, ah, maybe we can use surveys before we start the strategy and maybe some little surveys after the strategy and then we can compare if children learn something about. And, um, that you will have to also submit like a plan and you will have to reflect. I mean, every time you develop your strategy, you will set up a specific objective. Within that objective, you will have to specify which activities you will um, develop to achieve that objective. And then you will, at the end of the MOOC, you will have to think for every objective that you set in the strategy, you will have to define a way to assess it either quantitative or qualitative, and that will be up to you. So that's basically what this is all about. And all what I'm telling you, I mean, every aspect of this module will be, the final result will be that, uh, that you fill in this template uh, that you already have access to in a Word document, and you upload it on the platform, and that you review three strategies submitted by other people. So, <laughs> someone lost 32 kilos. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about the example, but I thought I once saw, I, I actually once I watched a video about how to write smart objectives. A smart objective is a concept that I will also teach you about. It's how to write objectives that are specific, uh, measurable, that are achievable, and that have like, that are time bound that I have a deadline. And the video, the example was about losing weight and I found it so useful <laughs> that I thought, oh, well, I keep on using that example. Uh, but um, I don't know, that was the explanation about the content. So is it clear for you? Do you, do you find it, do you still find it exciting to be following our MOOC? Or it's not like, oh no, I was hoping for something else. Um, so about the content, uh, I see another question about the Facebook group. Erai will reply to that because Erai is, is um, so if you want to ask me questions about the content, I mean, this is a good moment. And then Erai can finish with uh, the more general questions about that, about the Facebook group and these things he will explain before we. It's challenging. Yes, definitely. It's challenging. I know it's challenging. I mean, it's not easy because nobody's doing this. I mean, very few people are doing it. Many people um, all over the world think like, oh, okay, we celebrate Safer Internet Day and we are doing enough about online safety for children. And that's a pity. And that's why in this course we decided to start from the other side, like going deeper. And, and the most important part of this course is that you reflect about your school, what your school needs, uh, what your parents need, what, their, what are the parents' concerns, what are your colleagues' uh, interests, areas of interest, what they want to do. Uh, because if not, it, this, uh, any strategy, it won't work, really. It, it's, it's very difficult. It's a lot of work. You have to have pupils on board. You have to have everybody on board or the strategy no, won't achieve 
it's uh, and it sounds like yeah obvious but it's not so easy um, and and to tell you the truth in another European project we work which was very similar um, where we also supported teachers developing strategies but for something more specific uh, we were surprised at the end of that uh, project that the main challenge teachers had was not to engage pupils, but actually their own colleagues, to get their own colleagues aboard and parents. So I can already tell you that that part can be hard, so you will have to be very creative about what are you going to do to have those on board. Um, so, is the content clear? Oh, at least. Yes. You can ask me one, two questions about the content or type them, and otherwise I give the floor to arrive, to finish. And of course, we will be in touch through the Facebook group and other platforms. So if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask. We will keep an eye on social media. Okay. So, right. The floor yep. is yours to <laughs> finish. Uh, thank you, Veronica. Um, I believe it was um, quite clear, and I hope it, it was for the participants as well. I just have a couple of minor points to mention, and then we, we can move to answering questions that you may have. Um, as I was just mentioning in the chat, um, this course has a Twitter hashtag associated with it, as well as a, a Facebook group that is uh, designed for the course itself. Uh, we we would be very happy to see you in, in these um, two social media venues if you are of course willing. Uh, this is in no way um, uh, obligatory for, for you. But um, you can you can join in, in the discussions here as on the side uh, and you know uh, share your ideas with your Peers. Uh, beyond this, we, we would be very happy if you could share the word um, that and invite your friends and colleagues and peers that you might be interested in course with that link and you already have the link of the course uh, for yourself. Um, this is an exciting course, I hope, for you, and I'm, I'm sure it can be exciting for other colleagues and people you may know. So it would be very good for us to see them here, and I'm sure that it would be good for them if they are interested in this topic. And now, um, if I will move to the section where we are um, answering your questions. What I'm going to ask you is, um, you can always write in the chat if that's easier for you, or if you want to talk, you can raise your hands uh, by clicking on your name and, and, and uh, just clicking raise hand in the menu. Um, I will start by answering some of the questions that are already asked in the chat. Um, let's see. And thank you for doing the pre-course survey. Some of you has already notified. That's great. Um, there will also be a post-course survey, as I mentioned in the beginning. Please do that as well. Um, you don't have to join the Facebook group. It is advised that you do and share. It's more the merrier for us. Um, that is one place you can uh, ask us questions. If you don't want to use these two, it's fine. Um, you can see my email in the menus of the course. Uh, I, I believe it's called behind the course. So when you click that, you will see my email address there. Uh, that should be, um, you can use for any technical um, or content related questions. Alternatively, and this should be your first place to go, is a FAQ section, frequent to ask questions section in the top menu in the course website. Uh, please go there, see if your a question was already answered. In most cases, it will be, because that is a very, very uh, rich FAQ. 
Um, looking at other questions in the chat. I don't see any other questions. If you have any other questions, please write in the chat or, or, or um, speak up. <laughs> and yeah, as Veronica mentioned, it is your strategy. Make it um, as best as it can get for your school context. The course is... Um, this really depends on the participant, your level of uh, English, and how much time you can spend on it uh, each day. But approximately, we, we think that it might be four to five hours per uh, module, so up to 20, 25 hours total. Uh, I, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing your name right, We can tell. Could you please elaborate your question? What do you mean entering a deal? Uh, do you mean like mentioning password safety? And while I'll come back to that, uh, the question about Padlets. Yes, if you have par participated in past uh, MOOCs by our organization, we have used the Padlets there. It is the exact same thing. There is going to be a, a topic on top of it, and you will just have to click the plus sign and write your ideas. Uh, the course will not specifically talk about password safety, but um, this is more being safe online, like safer behavior, and how to um, come up with a strategy to make your school have better policies, better um, applications of online safety in your school. So it's not necessarily individual level safety. Any other questions? Right, I think. Sorry to interrupt you. I think that was a good, uh, good question about the the password safety. I mean, if you think about online safety, there are so many topics. I mean, it can be online safety, it can be GDPR, it can be cyberbullying. So that in one MOOC, it's impossible for us to focus on all the topics. But what we will do, um, we will this we will discuss in general terms why a good online safety policy. Is necessary and we would add in the resources section um, PDFs or links to uh, further information where you can depending on, on the focus of your strategy you can dig into further information about that so we will also give you for instance several fact sheets where you can um, find information uh, about how to make school infrastructure safer but that won't be strictly speaking um, the MOOC content because the MOOC is to help you get get the tools to define a strategy. Now, the content of that strategy is not the content of this MOOC. The content, you will determine it, but we will give you access and links and point you in the direction of where you could find resources related to the most salient online issues these days. So, is that clear? So, any other questions for, for, uh, regarding the course? I believe 
the the certificates are are usually on a predetermined template so at the end everybody gets the exact same um, certificate but this is uh, if you could email me on this I can I can reply to you with more um, uh, information for the time being I'm not entirely sure if it is mentioned uh, in on the certificate but I can learn from our technical um, team and, and come back to you please uh, send me an email uh, and I will learn that the peer activity by do you mean the peer review at the end peer-to-peer -peer review so at the end of the course when you are on the fourth module you will already have uh, the template this e-safety strategy template filled in assuming and you will then submit it on the website on the course page um, there will be a specific section on module 4 to submit this work document that you filled in and then you will receive um, three other strategies from other people in the course just who has submitted just as you have um, you will review them by using the rubric that we provided in module one and then um, you will add some comments uh, the, the system will will this uh, the it's a good question the system itself randomly assigns three uh, other projects to you so it's not really uh, the participants it's not really us it's the computer uh, the platform itself that does the assigning of uh, tasks I'm seeing some couple of people writing so I'm just waiting um, for you for them to write Well, um, do you mean the strategy that respects the age range of your school? Actually, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, the, I'm Can not I... sure if it's... Go ahead, Verunka. Yeah, I think um, the strategy should be based... I mean, that one of the first things that you need to... to, to... Um, including your strategy is your school context and you have to describe your school if it's a public private school if it's primary secondary technical vocational so depending on that on the background of your students you will have to uh, certain types of issues and definitely the ages is very important because younger children are not confronted with the same issues as, as older children so for instance for primary schools you might want to work more uh, preventively and uh, maybe involve parents more teach maybe develop some actions to involve strategy uh, parents so that they can also guide children at home while for teenagers that might be interesting to raise awareness among parents but parents for instance will not be working so closely with children or children are going to be using social media much more intensely uh, than younger children so definitely the age is important definitely and you start from that i mean okay my school has this type of pupil and this is why i want to focus on this thank you for that veronica um for uh, to answer that last question uh, it is still a random uh, assignment as you may, some of you may already know, um, the, these online courses are usually taken, registered by over a thousand people, sometimes several thousand. And so there are many, many, many uh, participants from various countries, from various backgrounds. They may not be teachers at all. Um, so no unfortunately you're or i shouldn't say unfortunately it's always good to see um, 
how it applies to other contexts. So, no, it's not going to be the same. Um, your peers will not be as coming from the same context as you are. It will be entirely random on all, on all aspects. Any other questions before we finalize the, the webinar? I hope everything was, was uh, clear and I hope that you will have um, a very good experience with this MOOC. It is surely um, very rich in content and has a lot of information and um, I am hoping that it will be very helpful for your uh, school context in terms of online safety. Waiting for those last couple of people to uh, finish. Crystal clear, perfect. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> Adobe Connect is not the best platform, but this is all we have at the moment. I'm sorry. And there are several people joining in, so it is not always uh, perfect. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is not in my power to change platforms. This is what the organization is using. But uh, I will surely uh, mention Zoom. Or got it. <laughs> is that is that a service? Anyways, um, thank you all for joining the MOOC and thank you all for coming to this webinar. I hope it was informative and um, making it clear for you. Um, and I hope that you are all going to finish it successfully and receive your certificates. Good luck in the MOOC and please feel free to uh, write to us in the Facebook group, in the Twitter channel and participate and share your ideas and invite your colleagues. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you all for being here and good luck with the MOOC.